The US government wants Americans to eventually convert to electric cars. That's why soon it will ban the sale of new combustion engine cars. But let's be real, aside from the higher price issue and range anxiety, how comfortable do you feel with the idea of even operating an electric car? Thing is, car makers are racing to electrify their current lineup and stretch how much driving range their EVs can offer, but they're not focusing on the one critical thing that matters the most, and that's the user experience. Today we're looking at how the user experience of operating an EV will either make or break your desire to own an electric vehicle. Think of the big companies that are successful right now. They are successful because they are not just focused on making money, but instead they focus more on improving lives or empowering people. Take Apple, Google, or Microsoft for example. Apple's mission is to bring the world's best user experience in hardware, software, and services. Google's mission is to make information universally accessible and useful. Microsoft's mission is to empower every person and organization to achieve more. If these companies cared only about making a quick buck, they'd be nowhere near churning out innovative products and services that we have today. In the old days, it took a lot of time to innovate something, and it also took time for people to adopt new methods of technologies. But right now, we live in an era where technology is developing at a lightning pace. The thing is, innovation begets further innovation. Today it takes less time to adapt to new technologies than ever before. Just think about the car industry as a case in point. It took over 100 years for cars to get where they are now. But then, think about the smartphone and social media. How rapidly these technologies have already changed the modern world in a relatively quick span of time. Because of this, if a company wants to stay relevant in this constantly changing landscape, it has only one option. Innovate, innovate, innovate. There was a study that was done. It turns out that most CEOs of large companies believe that innovation is the top priority. Yet, funny enough, only 20% of the CEOs surveyed actually put innovation as a priority in their business plans. The other 80% preached innovation as a priority, but there was no action or plans to put it into place. And that's the thing. Having a philosophy is different than actually delivering on it. It all comes down to execution and turning an intangible idea into a tangible reality. The thing is, most large organizations today aren't set up to create new and out of the box concepts. As well, innovation boils down to long term results. But the sad reality is most companies and organizations today are driven by short term performance results. And forget what big companies are saying about taking risks and failing. Companies are struggling to keep up with the fast pace of innovation. Failure is just not an option in most large corporations. Let's give you an example. The ice making industry. Now I know what you're thinking, Scotty, where are you going with this? But stay with me here. If you look back to the late 1800s and early 1900s, there was an ice harvesting business here in the States. Not many Americans know about this. The way it worked was pretty straightforward. Go to a frozen lake or pond in the winter, cut out the biggest blocks of ice you could, then sell them. Actually, it was a rapidly growing industry. In 1900, a whopping 9 million pounds of ice was harvested. Back then, innovation meant finding a bigger horse, a sharper saw, or a larger sled. But no matter what, you were still limited by one key factor. You could only get ice during certain winter months each year. A few years later, we saw the ice factory. You froze water centrally and delivered it by the ice man in the ice truck. Then came the refrigerator. And for the first time, now everybody could pretty much have their own personal ice factory in the kitchen. But here's the interesting thing. None of the businesses that were ice harvesters became ice factories. Also, the ice factories didn't become refrigeration companies. At the end of the day, all three gave ice to Americans. But the three did so in three different ways. Innovation comes down to having the right people in the right conditions, plain and simple. I'm not talking about people who just work to earn money and then go home. I'm talking about people who have an internal drive, people who need a creative purpose. With the right conditions, the right people can skyrocket a company's growth through innovative ideas. Let's say you're a company. Well, you might have an innovative employee, but unless you as a company provide the three right conditions, you won't really be able to tap in and capitalize from their potential. First, you as a company need to hire people based on their passion and internal drive, not just on their skills. Also, you need to create a safe, creative, and open environment that encourages new ideas and collaboration. And third, you need to allow your employees to take risks, fail, and learn from those failures. Here's the thing about innovative products. It needs to be unique. It needs to offer better value than existing alternatives. But at the same time, it can't be too novel and ahead of its time that people aren't ready for it. Also, it needs to have a great sticker price. 
Take a look at EV battery technology, for example. Right now, many EV makers use lithium ion batteries to power their cars. But compare this to solid state batteries, for example. A lithium ion battery is made up of a cathode, anode separator, and an electrolyte. Lithium ion batteries in smartphones, power tools, and EVs use liquid electrolyte solution. On the other hand, a solid state battery uses solid electric, not a liquid. Don't get me wrong, the solid state EV battery is unique and powerful, but it's also expensive, ranging between $400 to $800 per kilowatt. Hour, whereas lithium ion batteries cost about $156 per kilowatt hour. Bottom line, lithium ion batteries are cheap and they do the job. By contrast, solid state doesn't offer enough value to compensate for its high price. But now let's talk about UX and UI. UX refers to user experience. UI stands for user interface. Both aspects are crucial to a product's design, but especially when it comes to product innovation. Look, we've all experienced bad UI and UX design, which really killed your experience with the product. For example, Samsung monitors and TVs offer top-notch image quality. But here's the thing. The Samsung smart TVs are supposed to be smart, but look at the remote control. Just try switching a channel in a dark room and you see what I mean. The Samsung remote is plain dumb compared to the one for Apple TV, and that one interaction alone frustrates your TV viewing experience. But let's apply this to cars. Fact is, UX and UI design are critical to the car industry more than ever before, but especially with emerging EVs. Just take EV charging as an example. Chances are, you represent the typical American consumer who owns a conventional combustion engine car. Think about when it comes to time to be shopping for your next car. Reality is, charging an EV requires a new learning curve. It can get complicated for some people. Chances are that most older Americans over age 60 will never buy an EV. Regardless of age, if car makers want to convert more Americans to transition from combustion engine to electric, then they'll need to make it easier and simpler for car owners to charge an EV. Otherwise, it'll just distract and discourage people from making that transition. I'll give you an example, the infamous Tesla steering yoke. If you're wondering what a steering yoke is, generally, it's like mixing the round steering wheel and replacing it with a rectangular or U-shaped one. Usually, you find this type of steering wheel in airplanes and Formula One race cars. With the yoke steering wheel, a pilot can make minor right-left steering inputs and push and pull the wheel to steer the plane in different directions while the plane is in mid-air. But here's the thing, last time I checked, cars don't fly. Most car experts will tell you that there really isn't a need for this type of wheel on vehicles for the road. Hand over hand turns are actually a whole lot easier to execute on a round steering wheel compared to a steering yoke. Yet despite this, a few years back in January 2021, Tesla decided to incorporate its new steering yoke in the Model S and Model X vehicles. Let's just say it got a lot of mixed reviews. You know those nonconformist people who love anything unconventional, not because it's necessarily better, but simply because it's different. Well, of course, they praised Tesla for the yoke. At the same time, though, there were critics who just asked, why? Initially, the steering yoke came as optional, but then Tesla decided to include the yoke as a standard in those models. The weird thing about Tesla yoke design is that it's physically connected to the front wheels, so it takes more than two complete rotations to turn it from lock to lock. So instead of a smooth spin you get from a standard steering wheel, you're stuck with an awkward choppy motion as you take your hands off the yoke, change your grip, then cross your arms during tight turns. Even worse is that this choppy motion is even more noticeable at lower speeds. Realize as an airplane, you don't need to spin it a whole bunch, just a little bit turns the plane. They don't have to be turned around two complete rotations. But it wasn't just the shape of the steering wheel that was problematic. It was also the buttons. In a Model S Plaid, Tesla chose to use capacitive buttons for the turn signals, headlight adjusters, and so forth. But the problem is, most American drivers are used to flipping the side levers up or down to signal the turn. So the Tesla yoke requires drivers to develop a new muscle memory. Also, when the yoke is turned upside down and you have to signal a turn from that position, finding and pressing the right buttons can be a real pain. Anyway, there was so much criticism around the Tesla yoke that several months ago, Tesla finally offered a retrofit that allows owners of Model S and X to replace their steering yoke with a conventional steering wheel. Well, the kit sold out in just the first week. Add to that the fact that the traditional steering wheel is now Tesla's store's best-selling item, and you can clearly see how the owners really feel about Tesla's steering yoke. 
but it gets even worse. Some Tesla owners were even reporting that Tesla yokes were literally falling apart. One owner posted a picture of a steering yoke on Twitter. Apparently, after only 12,000 miles on his Plaid Model S, the yoke steering wheel was already beginning to peel. Other owners reported a similar problem. A few even said that the peeling started happening after 4,000 miles. Now, of course, Tesla says it will replace any prematurely peeling wheels under warranty. Even so, the fact that this was not an isolated issue draws even more criticism around the Tesla steering yoke, not to mention overall build quality, or lack thereof. The Tesla steering yoke is just one example of how bad designs can give users a bad user experience. It's stuff like that which makes consumers hold back from adopting EVs. But now you tell me, do you think the user experience in EVs is good enough for you to convert to an electric car? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.